Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard and we're talking about false teaching today and how old it is and how it's really not new. Coming up next. Okay, yeah, false teaching hates truth. It does. And it's something that we often think is new, it's modern as people in the church and even in the culture we don't like lies. Most people don't, although many people are liars, which is interesting. But false teaching always hates the truth. This might go without saying, but nevertheless is true. It might sound harsh even to some people, but we need to remember it because it does matter. I want to make a distinction here that sometimes people are false teachers and or do false teaching, but it's not exactly the same thing. If you do false teaching, you're automatically a false teacher or worse, an actual heretic. There are degrees, it seems, gradations, if you will, with faux doctrine and phony sophists. Examples of this abound, of course, in scripture and how Jesus and the apostles and many others even dealt with these things. Those who dealt with even things today, Sometimes it's just skepticism or mistakes, but either way, it might even just be rebellion. But the point is, false teaching happens. The intent seems to be the case, though. That's what I want to look at. It's the massive glacier that lays beneath the surface of the waters of life. What is the false teacher's motive? What's the purpose? What's the intention? What's his or her heart like? That's the difference. Everybody's bias, the false teacher and you and me and everybody else, the Christ follower, the skeptic, the one who hates God, the one who loves God, everybody, everybody's bias. So just think for a moment that some people only teach falsely and some people only teach truth is not true. Yet frequently this is the case and it really we have to look at the, the overall happenstance of how often the false teaching happens. Now I could go to any number of passages from scripture that handle false teaching directly. We could do that. But at the end of the day, we're going to look at just a few. One comes from uh, Saul or Paul. This is right when he's changing his name, as it were, in the missionary journey of Acts 13. Paul, by the way, is just his Roman name, uh, not his Jewish name, is Saul. Acts 13, 6 through 12. When they had gone through the whole island, as far as Paphos, they came upon a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence, who summoned Barnabas and Saul, and sought to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the magician, for that is the meaning of his name, opposed them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him. And said, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of deceit and villainy. Will you not stop making the crooked straight path, making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. Immediately a mist and darkness fell upon him and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had occurred, for he was astonished at the teaching of the Lord. English Standard Bible, ESV. So we can see Paul here is engaging with a false teacher, and he's very direct. Barnabas and Saul, now Paul and his companions, is something that, this is the shift within Acts from Peter and then Paul and then, or Barnabas and Paul now, or Barnabas and Saul now, it's Paul. He's encountering the Roman leader, Sergius Paulus, and his, one of his inner circle, Bar-Jesus, or Elymas. He's an advisor, somebody who tells them what to do. They're on the island of Cyprus there. He's ruling and reigning a very quiet, peaceful island compared to a place like Judea. So what's going on here? Well, you think, well, Paul's being really unchristlike, right? Oh, man, calling people son of the devil. You can't unbelievers sons of satan and daughters of the devil like what that's rude it's not nice well context is essential in everything we understand the scripture really everything in life but especially when we look at the scripture bar jesus means son of jesus or better yeshua joshua that means deliverer salvation 
That's why we have Joshua in the Old Testament, and of course, Jesus in the New Testament. Jesus wasn't the only one. So this man's father's name was just Josh, right? Yes, Jesus Christ was effectively Joshua or Yeshua, the Messiah, right? Probably Carpenter or something like that if he had a last name. Of course, Christ isn't his last name. Paul takes this and turns this around as a rebuke, saying, oh, yeah, you have, you know, son of Jesus. Well, not really. You're the son of Satan, right? Bar there is son of. It's like Barnabas is the son of encouragement, for example. So, fine. What's the point, though? Well, why does he sound so harsh? You have to think, well, I mean, this is ridiculous. You can't call, you know, enemy of all righteousness. Why would he do this? Why not just preach the gospel, we hear? Why not just, you know, why, why do this and that? Just why, why are you being a jerk? Are you saying that we should go around and be jerks to people, Richard? Is that what you're saying? Paul did it, right? Sons of Satan and daughters of the devil. Is that what we should do? Well, not necessarily, though, depending on the level of false teaching, if somebody's a skeptic, nah. But if they're a false teacher, adamantly opposed, and they know the truth, well, that's a different story altogether. As I said, context matters. Who is Bar Jesus? Well, he's Jewish, right? He's a Jewish false prophet. Deuteronomy 18, 20 is clear. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. New King James. The prophet shall die. Now we have prophecies all the time. I had a dream. God told me. God showed me. Really? You willing to die on that? I don't think so. He's a man, right? And he should know Yahweh, the Lord. He's Jewish. And he's practicing magic, no less. He knows these things. Paul knows that he knows. God knows that he knows. He knows that Paul knows. The Jewish should not, Jewish false prophets or real prophets should not be practicing sorcery. And that's what it is. He's not doing children's birthday parties, pulling rabbits out of hats and whatever. Little party tricks. This guy's a witch. He's literally a sorcerer of demonic powers. <laughs> that's a big difference. And he's teaching along with that. So the situation is very similar to Philip and Peter with Simon Magus in Acts 8, 9 through 25. Same thing. Peter says here, may your gold or rather silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter and your heart is not right before God, ESV. I love that. You can't buy salvation. You can't buy it then. You can't buy it now. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. It is a gift of God. So that no one will brag about it. No one will boast. The proconsul, the regional ruler there, Sergius Paulus, he calls Barnabas in Saul and he says, hey, I want to hear something to say. You know, maybe he thought already something or heard something, but they were, you know, traveling philosophers. But Bar Jesus knows, doesn't he? The false teacher always knows because they always hate truth. False teaching always hates truth. He may have figured, well, you guys are both Hebrews, all Hebrews, great. Let's have a conversation. Let's hear something new. Because remember, there's no TV, there's no movies, there's not even electricity. So he's here, and we think, what are they doing? Well, Paul knows who he is. And Elymas, the sorcerer, is struck blind before Sergius Paulus. That's a big deal. But we'll look at in a moment what he's really astonished at, not so much the miracle. So why did Bar-Jesus uh, oppose the truth, though? Right? Right? Why did he do that? Well, one verse comes to mind. They love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. That's why. Bar Jesus likely knew the power of God to salvation for all who believe, at least in some respect. He knew that God could and would save a repentant sinner. And if Sergius Paul then believed and turned from his Roman gods and embraced Jesus as Lord, which he ends up doing, then Bar Jesus would be out of a sorcerer job. And those sorcerer jobs are pretty cush, pretty easy, pretty nice. Not just a trick as an entertainer, right? Slinger of fun things, you know, just doing things on the weekend. He's there all the time, likely. He's got the secret knowledge. He's got the insight. We see this all the time online. But he was using demonic powers and conjuring up them to instruct and inform Sergius Paulus. How often does that happen today? I don't know. But when sinful humanity has a grip on power, they rarely give it up, especially when it comes to a pretty paycheck. Something we can apply today. So Acts 19, later on, as much sheds a lot of light on this as well. The financials of someone and how they will get defensive because of this. You're going to follow the yellow brick road. Where the money goes. 
That's where the root lies. So chapter 19 discusses the financial loss that comes to peddlers of lifeless statues. Dead gods. Demetrius, it says, a silversmith who had a large business manufacturing silver shrines of the Greek goddess Artemis. He kept many craftsmen busy. New Living Translation. Though not a ruler or elected official, right? He's just making money. He has maybe kids to feed, hobbies, you know, he's got to take the boat out, jet skiing, whatever, eating. He's going to lose money, his lucrative laundering of idols to hapless people of Ephesus. Well, that's going to be stopped. And that's what did happen. Because they're worshiping the living God, not dead gods. It goes on, he says, he called them together. You know, it's like a union meeting, great. They already have unions. And along with other employed in silver tra similar trades and address them as follows. Gentlemen, you know that our wealth comes from this business. But as you have seen and heard, this man, Paul, has persuaded many people that handmade gods aren't really gods at all. And he's done this not only here in Ephesus, but throughout the whole province. Acts 19, 25, 26. That's, it. That, that's huge, right? And that's something that we can easy, easily apply to today. So when people reject dead idols of consumerism, politicking, gender experiments, identity politics, and embrace the living God, Jesus Christ, as Lord, things change, including money. Money spent, money earned, how you do what you do. The difference is Christ. Back to Jesus, bar Jesus, that is, and Paul. So Paul's direct, right? He's direct in the point of calling him an enemy of all righteousness. Because Elemas should know better. That's the difference. Paul's influence over this leader, his influence over the leader, and the strategic placement is far more damaging than some doofus twiddling his thumbs sitting in a corner at a local Cyprus strip club. I mean... Yeah, you know, respectable temple of Artemis of the Ephesians, right? But the biggest thing is that Elymas is seeking to distract from God's desire for the gospel to be proclaimed to sinners and turn from their sin and embrace Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's the difference. He's opposing the truth. He's not just false teaching. He's opposing the truth and opposing truth tellers because false falsity fake lies, all the stuff, hates, false teachers hate the truth. Whoever they are, wherever they are, make no mistake, there are elements in the SBC, in the PCA, the LCMS, the Methodist, yes, even the conservative ones, many non-denominational Bible groups, your favorite pastor, online, whatever, non-denoms as they call it, you know, they're basically Baptist, but whatever. Evangelical won't save you. Being evangelical won't save you. You must be constantly renewed. You can't just settle and think, well, we're good. No, you have to guard against all types of false teaching. Romans 12, 2, Matthew 16, 12. We have to stand firm in these things, Galatians 5 tells us. Beloved, he says, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. That's 1 John 4, 1. Galatians 5 is applicable though too. So the question for us, for you, which will you be? Will you be a Sergius Paulus who is seeking out and saying, well, I want to know more about this. I want to read the Bible. I want to understand and embrace Christ. Or are you going to be Elemis who opposes the truth and opposes those? You might leave a comment on this video. You might see somebody else. You might say, oh yeah, there's a bunch of, you know, heretics. They're a bunch of hypocrites. They're a bunch of whatever. Are you going to oppose the beautiful gospel, the, the miraculous gospel? And preach a different gospel. Which one will you be? That's the question. Elemis, Sergius Paulus. Because this isn't new. We see this all the time. And I could fill in people name after name after name. So I hope this finds you well. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Uh, it does help out the channel. I know it's a little click thing. But I mean, it's, you know, I don't want to beg. But I'm almost there. But no, really, uh, if you found this helpful, if you like this, go ahead and like this video as well. I do have a website, richardthenry.com. You can check that out. It's got these videos plus the blog 
as well as other things, um, videos where I'm doing collabs with other people on other channels, and it's got all my social media links there too, so you can kind of go. And lastly, there's actually a news um, letter. You can link up, and basically we get connected. I'm not going to sell your email or give it to anybody else. Basically, I just have a list of emails that I will send about once a month, maybe twice a month, different newsletters, and connect with people. Uh, just in case, you know, just in case I get I get banned or something goes bad, uh, I can still have those and connect with people. I've uh, got quite a few people already, so it's good stuff. Y'all take care. Be against the world for the world. I'll see you.